Hello again everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and today I will be discussing with all of you a real Swiss Army Knife exercise, the Bent Arm Barbell Pullover. Now the reason I call it the Swiss Army Knife exercise is because it has utilitarian purposes. It can be used for multiple different applications depending on the athletic endeavor you are pursuing, whether you are a weightlifter, a bodybuilder, a powerlifter, a football player, any sport or athletic endeavor where you need to get stronger and look bigger, this exercise can help you with that, especially in your upper body. It targets multiple different muscle groups, and depending on the literature you read, it's either a chest exercise, a back exercise, some people regard it as a great shoulder builder and stabilizing exercise to build the stabilizing muscles in your shoulder girdle, and it's just simply amazing. Today I will be giving you a brief history of the exercise and the uses it has. I will also be describing how to perform it, and I will demonstrate it for all of you. And of course, if you have any questions about this exercise, just leave them in the comment section and I'll make sure to get back to you. But I hope you enjoy this video. First off, I feel I should discuss the history of the bent arm barbell pullover. As mentioned earlier, it is a true multi-purpose exercise that develops the entire upper body, from the lats to the chest, from the shoulders to the traps, to even the rib cage. And this is uh, not an exhaustive list by any means. You could definitely put forearms in there. It's just unbelievable. It was very common during the bronze, silver, and early golden eras of bodybuilding. You can still see it being performed today, although the application is, is dependent on the individual. And I would definitely say it's a lot less frequent before it was used by literally everybody. It was practiced by weightlifters and bodybuilders alike, along with sport, sports athletes that were playing football or wrestling or any of those real competitive strength sports. It has tremendous strength carryover into many different lifts. Lifts like the barbell bench press, the barbell row, and deadlifts all greatly benefit from this movement. Among bodybuilders, it was common to see this exercise performed after a heavy set of barbell breathing squats to help increase the size of the rib cage. This was extremely common. In fact, in Bill Pearl's first uh, booklet, um, he mentions that th this is actually in the program to do a heavy set of breathing squats and then follow that up with a barbell pullover. And this is common among all bodybuilders during this time. Steve Reeves did it as well. And that's what gave you, gave you that very large rib cage and enhanced the size of your chest overall. A large rib cage was seen as a sign of vitality among men at the time. And this goes for bodybuilders and weightlifters. Among weightlifters, though, this exercise was used to help athletes increase their pressing power. Bob Hoffman owner of York Barbell and the U.S. weightlifting coach at the time, was particularly fond of this exercise. And if you read any strength and health magazines from the 19, early, uh, well, late 1930s up to about 1970, you'll see that this exercise is extremely common and implemented among all of his athletes because he described uh, it as having carryover into his athletes overhead pressing and supine presses so for those uh, olympic weightlifters it really helped them get a lot stronger in their upper body okay in the next slide i will explain how to perform this exercise for you and this is how to perform the bent arm barbell pullover before i go over this i feel that i should mention this is taken from keys to the inner universe by bill pearl it is not an exact copy, it is my own interpretation from his literature, and I have added in tips from other people, from other pieces of literature like Steve Reeves about this exercise. So to start off, you want to begin by placing a moderately heavy barbell onto your upper thighs before sitting on a supine or flat bench. You will then lay back on the bench and kick the barbell to your chest and not over your chest like you've completed a bench press, just onto your chest. Your hands at this point should be around 14 inches apart. At this point, you want your shoulder blades to be on the very top of the bench. 
your head will actually be hanging off of the bench and pointed slightly downwards at all times. With the barbell now lying on your pec line, so that's like around your nipple line, begin raising the barbell in an arc pattern over your shoulders and head until it either touches the floor or until you cannot physically descend any longer. Of course, if you have any pain, you should also stop. Keep the barbell in very close proximity to the body, and Bill Pearl mentions that scraping the nose is actually acceptable. You also want to make sure to tuck your elbows as much as possible throughout the entire movement. You can have them out slightly, but don't have them all the way out to like your ears like you're doing a a neck press or something like that. You want to have them fairly tight to your body. To bring the barbell back up once it's at the bottom of the, move, the movement, you simply follow the same path as before. A tip here is to help expand the rib cage if you're implementing this for a bodybuilding program is to always keep the chest very high and hit a vacuum on the descent of the movement and then release it as you're going back up and that will really help expand the rib cage and you'll probably feel some soreness in that area over the next couple of days if you're doing it right. You also want to make sure to work on your breathing and you want to inhale at the top of the movement and exhale at the bottom. Another tip I like to always give is remember to always control the weight. Don't swing it around. Be very slow and methodical with your exercise. In the next slide, I will demonstrate this for you. Okay, and this is the bent arm barbell pullover. At this point, I already have the barbell at my nipple line. I have my head beyond the bench. My shoulder blades are the last thing touching the edge of the bench. My head is slightly pointed down, and I am bringing that barbell in an arc pattern beyond my shoulders and head and, and so that it is positioned finally behind my head, and I'm going as far down as possible until I really can't go anymore. My shoulders lock up. I'm making sure to also keep my elbows as close to my upper body as possible. They're slightly outwards, but, but they're fairly close. They're certainly not in any position that would be like a neck press or anything. I am also making sure that my hands are 14 inches apart. And most critical, I think, my butt is staying planted on the bench and I am slightly arching when I'm going through the motion and I'm making sure to hit a vacuum. And that's really the key. If you're trying to implement this exercise for bodybuilding in particular, and you're trying to develop a big rib cage, it's real important that you get that slight arch so you can suck your stomach into your rib cage. And that's really key. A lot of people, when, they, when I've seen modern people demonstrate this exercise, they don't hit the vacuum. You know, they're really using it as a lat builder. But I think if you implement it, uh, this exercise in the old school style, you're really getting a lot more out of it. As you can see, when I'm initially going back, my shoulders are flexed. When I'm at the very bottom, my lats are engaged. When I'm pulling the barbell back over, very much my chest and my front deltoid is hit. Of course, throughout the entire movement, I am hitting the vacuum, so that is creating that incredible stretch in the rib cage. Because I'm also holding the barbell in this compromised position, I'm also working my forearms. And I'm uh, another thing I'm, I needed to mention is I am also controlling my breathing. So I am, I am breathing in at the top and breathing out at the bottom of the movement. And I am also making sure that no matter what, I keep my head pointed slightly down. I think there's one portion at like the sixth rep where I kind of looked up a little bit. Try to stay away from that. It's a bad habit I have to like watch my weight. You want to have your head tilted back as much as possible. That will increase the stretch you get from this exercise. But it's really a wonderful exercise. I don't know if I would say it is technically forgotten, but it is definitely underutilized in the modern bodybuilding scene. Additionally, if you have no interest in bodybuilding, but you have interest in strength gain or muscular gain, it's just a fantastic exercise to add in because it hits the entire upper body. And if you really increase the poundage to uh, a large amount of weight, you really work everything in the upper body in a very short amount of time. It's very 
time friendly. If you are limited on time, you can definitely add this into a routine uh, in replace of any of those extra any of those body parts we mentioned previously, like your chest or your back or shoulders. Or add it in as a supplementary exercise if you were in powerlifting or weightlifting to increase your pressing strength. But it is a truly wonderful exercise. I don't know how much more I would need to say to sell it to you. Definitely give it a try. It's been one of my staples for years now. I've incorporated it into nearly all of my routines. And if you have any questions about this exercise, do let me know in the comment section. Also, if you have any recommendations for any future video ideas, drop them down there below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We are on the way to a thousand subscribers. It's truly unbelievable. I, I can't believe I'm nearing 800 subscribers in such a short amount of time. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And until next time, this is Forgotten Fitness signing out. Bye-bye.